If you've watched the show before, I don't know, it was a year or so ago. Uh, by the way, we're down at the uh, Ipswich Museum. Many of you still call it the Herd House. And uh, we had Jake Burridge and this man, I want to reintroduce him, Jim Giaconis. Okay. That's enough. Um, Jake couldn't make it today, so we got Jim. We're going to take another look at the old tools and stuff. But first, I wanted you to see a diorama. Is that what we call it? Yeah. A diorama. <laughs> that Jimmy made. And I'll let him explain. It's, it's pretty fascinating. But. Well, in Newbury, there are the haystacks, and I uh, redone that with this diorama to show the different tools and the uh, things that went on. There's a guy up there stacking the hay. These people are uh, throwing the hay up to him. Uh, this guy is dragging. I have a drag at home. Uh, I donated the uh, bull rake number three. It's breaking up, breaking up this Number one is called the gungalow. Uh, number ten are called staddles. They put the haystacks on staddles so the tide wouldn't wash them off. And then when they wanted to pick them up, they went out with this gungalow, stacked it, and rode it or pulled it back to the shore to the wagons. They weren't meant to be left over winter. They harvested them because the stuff would settle from the rain and snow and become very, very hard. You, you had to use a uh, number four. Uh, hay knives. Hay knives, yeah. What did they do this? Where did the straw go for? I mean, what, what did they, they used it initially for feeding the cows, but the salt made a big difference in the taste of the milk, so they stopped it. And they, high blood pressure. They, they used it for bedding for strawberries. They used it for bedding for different plants. Stacking around the houses for insulation. Okay. That stacking around the houses kept the house from getting cold, the cellars. They put a little form around, uh, maybe about two feet high, yeah. with boards staked in, and then they'd throw the hay around against the uh, insulation. foundation for insulating the cellar. Uh, they used it in the cow barns for, uh, uh, what do they call it, where they put the cows around the cows where they uh, defecate. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, it's a polite word. Yeah. <laughs> I want to show this old-fashioned oh. rake. All right. If you, if you looked at this picture, you'll see the rakes have the steel, uh, have the steel uh, braces. Okay. It, this one just splayed out, and they got wedges that locked this in. Uh, the guy that had New England alive, Jensen. Yeah. He, he oh, 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 yeah, yeah. There's another innovation. They put the dowels in. Now these were cut by hand. Yeah. And they drove pins in there to spread it to tighten the teeth. They, they wet them. No, they just drove the uh, thing in. Well, that's the old shipbuilding method. It's amazing. Right. Right. Uh, you know. Well, I just wanted to show that, and uh, of course... He's ignoring me because he doesn't know anything these, about shipping. These, am I still on? Yes, <laughs> these, we're always on. These are uh, Don't have pitch forks, and they come in different sizes. Some are only that big, guys. and some are 16, uh, maybe 12 feet long, so they can throw the uh, hay up into the guy that's stacking these things here. You're making me scared. You don't hit me with that. Huh? But don't hit me with that. I want to show this picture that Jimmy has. Uh, you take a look at that. Everybody with instruments, right? But take a look at this guy here. Yeah. He's got a baseball club. I think it was tongue-in-cheek photograph, right? From the diorama we've moved to the real stuff. That's a bull right? yeah. That's a scythe. That's a uh, crib scythe over there. Well, that kept the hay from just falling any which way. That's why they call it a crib. It would crib the hay as you cut it and okay. keep it all together rather than just fall any which way. But that just left it uh, free. It, and they had to use the drag anyway to bring the hay to the stacks. That's, you that's donated really that nice. shovel too, right? You told me you donated that shovel? Yeah. Wooden shovel, that's kind of weird. Huh? That's kind of weird, wooden shovel. I that know. must have that's, some age. That's why, that's why I brought it in. I mean, it got plenty of use, as you can see. What do you think the vintage is of that? What is, what is the date? 
I don't know, the way they split the handle and everything, that, that's got to go in the maybe late 1800s, I'd say. Do you have any idea what that is? It's a press of some kind. It's, uh, I, I wish I could. Uh, we had that problem before. It's not uh, an apple press, but it, weird, huh? It's definitely a press, as you can, as you can see. S some of the parts might be missing. I think it was a, a cider press. Ah, okay. Because there's that. a dripping uh, yeah, spot yeah. here. Yeah. Just like the sacrifice altar down in Machu Picchu. <laughs> <laughs> that there. Marsh ditch cutter. Yeah, well, they, they used to cut the marsh for the drainage ditches. Yeah. They did that way, way back before they started harvesting the hay because the, the uh, marshes couldn't be wet. They couldn't work them. So they made the drainage ditches, and that was exactly the size that the ditches are. They'd cut it, and then they'd take shovels and dig them out so the marshes would drain. I know that's what that was for. One man? Oh, one man can, can do that, no. Yeah. You know, as you go down off of Jeffers Neck Road, you've got the, uh, the little, uh, I call it a canal, but they're only yeah. this big. Was that a WPA? I'm not sure when those were put in. A lot of them were uh, projects, WPA projects. Would they use something like that? Or yeah, they use the, the hay, hay knives and then they uh, hit, switch to uh, shovels. But you, I mean, you couldn't get heavy equipment out there because it's uh, soft and mushy, right? I mean, so it had to be by hand, right? They had to drain the marshes so they could work them with the horses and stuff. Otherwise, it'd sink in. That's why they have bog shoes. I had the bog shoes on that uh, thing. Oh, they're like boots? Huh? Bo like boots? No, they were a flat disc that the hoof of the horse set in. He had four of them. Oh. And then uh, as he walked on the marsh, he wouldn't sink in. Gotcha. When they, when they dragged it with a hay drag. Hey, listen, speaking of horses. Huh? Speaking of horses. You know what this is? Look at this. You know what that is? Uh, it's not a cobbler thing. No, similar, uh, harness, similar. Harness, uh, harness maker. Yeah. Of, um, what? Lath or la whatever you'd call it. And uh, the uh, harness maker would make the harness. Stop seat. Don't push it too much. We don't want to get. <laughs> we got a, one of the employees over there watching. But listen, since there was a lot of interest in this town in Little Neck and all the feffies and stuff we had. Take a look at this. This was a little neck fire hose. And as you pointed out, I said it was horse drawn, but you, you noticed the trailer, so this was obviously must be. Originally, before vehicles, they were pulled by hand. The hand tubs were pulled by horses. And if you know some of those hills at Little Neck, you can imagine the work that was involved in this building. Let's well, see. Uh, what do you Jack, think? Jack Whitten talked about the thing that almost got away from him. Oh, really? And they, uh, it almost got away from them. It was rolled out. Into well, I mean, when the, all the, the hose was on, it must have been store. You know the store there? <laughs> but with all that hose, this thing maybe must have been pretty heavy, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what do you think? Get over here. It looks like another press. Could be a, a butter press or a cheese press. Cheese press. I was close. That'd be kind of cool. can't. Uh, we used, gets my we used yeah. this at the school. Uh, it might be broken. Oh. It makes a dowel. You, you cut a piece of wood, a yeah. branch or anything, about an inch wide. Then you take this and you start turning it, and it makes a perfect three-quarter inch dowel. And you could adjust the... Yeah, you could adjust the diameter here with these screws. No, no, right? no. It'll only take that diameter. If you try to adjust it, it won't. It'll ride off and on. It's got to stay exactly in line with this. So diameter. how would you make a different size? You'd have different, like drill bits almost. You'd have different ones if you wanted to make a, a wider. Well, you'd have to di have a different one of these. Yeah. It would. Uh, it, it, this is locked in I see, position. I see now, yeah. That's cool. I was saying to Jim off uh, camera, we ought to go out to Brimfield. If you've never heard of Brimfield's out in Western Mass. Yeah, I, supposedly I intend the to king, get there. The king of flea markets. Yeah. I mean, it's just, but anyhow, I want to talk about something over here, if we can right. move, which I had never seen before. And the first show we did here, I don't think 
we got into this section of the barn. This is a heavy wagon jack. Right. No. Work it. Those wagons were heavy. Are you telling me that one guy? Or well, you, you've got a fulcrum there. Uh, uh, yeah, but still. I mean, these wagons were heavy. Yeah, well, what you they just did, had to they, get raised, they raised it and then they, they put a wedge in there because it doesn't lock up. I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no lock up place for it. See, they have to yeah, put yeah. something in there. Stick your finger in there again, wait. No. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> talked about this, did you? I don't think. You tell me about this. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a pitchfork. It's a rugged thing. That's the way the original settlers that have probably made them because they didn't have all the fancy equipment when they first came over. Uh, I had a difficult time finding a three-pronged tree and it had to be hardwood. Uh, this is maple. And uh, after you find the tree, you make a form so you get the curve. And you can make that any, any curvature you want and any spread you want because when it's green you can move it in any direction. And then you leave it in winter and take the form off and then below and behold you get a spoke shave and you shave the back off and you have a pitchfork. The and very it. first time I ever met Jim, Don and Sophia, this years ago, he looked at me and he said, we're always in transition. And I said, when I walked out, I said, this guy's blowing my mind. <laughs> it, was, it was funny. So I think we're basically exhausted this here. And uh, we'll go on to, I think we're going to make a visit to uh, Jimmy's house uh, because uh, yeah, you gotta come up and he's see been the after me and I, uh, I've been negligent and, then, and he's got a whole bunch of stuff. Up I know. There, so. I know. All right, listen. Thank you, my friend. Interesting people are busy too. Busy people are happy people. Right.